Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to the How We Heal series. This uh, series is brought to you by members of the Inner Arts Collective here in Toronto, um, although Jennifer is joining us from, from somewhere else today. Um, the How We Heal series is here to spark conversation about different themes around wellness that are emerging um, in each of our practices. And it's really here, the panels are here to offer some insight and tools and strategies to help all of us thrive. Um, things, are, things are pretty intense in the world right now. And our goal is to really shape the discourse and give everybody some tools and strategies so they can really move forward in the best way that they can. Um, these, these times really present an opportunity and their teachers teaching moments all around us uh, to rise to the occasion and, um, and be resilient. So my name is Melanie Olenberg and I'll be our moderator today. I'm joined here by Deborah Brody, Amanda Williams and Jennifer Polensky. Um, and let's see, I have, there we go. Um, so before we get started, I'd like to acknowledge the, the land that we're each on here in Toronto. Uh, we acknowledge that we're on the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and it's now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. So I invite each of you to, you can type in the comment box where you're from, um, and just take a moment to close your eyes after you're done this to recognize the people of the land that you're on. Um, and the ancestors in your bloodline that are here with you today, uh, because the work that we're that we're doing today really builds on on this past that we're all standing in, and it creates a better future for generations to come. For those of you who have just joined us, we're just um, entering in the comment box where we're from and honoring um, the bloodline within us, our ancestors, as well as the, the land that we're on. Okay, so we have Costa Rica, Stouffville, Ontario, Toronto, Boston, Markham, Brampton. Beautiful. Thank you. Thornhill. Jewish, English, Irish, and Dutch. Beautiful. Jewish. We have a beautiful mixture of of backgrounds and bloodlines and land today. So to begin, um, I'd like to start just, just giving you a framework of how the structure of the hour will go. We'll begin with some introductions. So each of our panelists will introduce themselves um, and what brings them to the conversation. Um, each of our each of our members they volunteer for these discussions. So they choose they choose panels that are close and dear to their hearts, um, and that really uh, speak to their speak to their soul, speak to their practice, speak to the the work that they're most passionate about. So I'd like to um, start with with introductions, and then we have some some curated questions 
um, just to bring you through, um, bring us all through a discussion around um, what we mean by presence, um, what's showing up in terms of challenges and opportunities and some practices to move forward. And then um, with the time that we have left and throughout, I invite you to enter any, any questions that you have in the comment box. Um, and then I will uh, weave those into the conversation today, um, be it um, in uh, with, with one of the questions that I've already curated, if it flows better there, or at the, at the end, um, we'll have like 10, 15 minutes for participant questions. So to get started, um, Jennifer, would you mind getting started with an introduction? Um, introduce yourself, let people know about your practice um, and what brings you to cultivating presence. Why is this such an important topic today? Sure, thank you. So there is a, a bit of a lag, I believe, in the sound. Um, I am from Toronto, uh, currently in Costa Rica. And so a bit of my background, what I've been focusing on and cultivating in my practice is supporting people to come back to themselves, to come back to their true nature um, for various reasons in the society that we live in and the influence of the society that we live in has caused us to stray from our natural Selves. And so it's quite amazing to be right now in a place like Costa Rica where the, the nature is, is all around you and actually comes inside into the dwellings. Um, and to it, it took a, a week or so to, to settle and to um, integrate here because it was so different from being in Toronto so that it was a bit jarring almost to be uh, showered with so much nature, so much of, of myself, it was almost overwhelming. And so to come back home to that, and I do that by with a number of modalities, um, energy work, really looking at the core issues. What are the unconscious beliefs um, the subconscious beliefs that unconsciously run our lives and looking at that. So today's panel is so, uh, so home to, to my heart, um, so deeply at home in my heart. And it's, it's something that I offer in my work is how to come back to presence um, in the moment, how to come back to ourselves, how to come back to our true nature so that we can live in a more authentic way and come into a deeper connection with what we're actually here to do and then have the courage and the confidence and the worthiness and the belief of I'm enough to actually do that and offer that into the world. So very grateful to be here and thank you, thank you, thank you. Beautiful, thank you so much. Deborah, would you mind introducing yourself, your work, and what brings you to Cultivating Presence? There I am. Am I on the, on the screen? Can you see me? Okay, good. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. Oh my gosh, presence is everything. It, it's, uh, you know, presence is the, uh, my work as a, I've been a yoga teacher for, gosh, about 21 years and practicing for, I don't even want to say how many years I've been practicing this, <laughs> give away my age, but, um, you know, as a yogi, you know, presence is everything. That's, it, it's like, it's that coming into that present moment. I've been it's in my practices and how I work with others and my teaching and my own practice. I work with um, the work I do, um, you know, I kind of uh, evolve from just straight yoga teaching because I'm also a sound healer and a ceremonial artist. So I've created a, a 
cross-pollinated a program I call radical self-nourishment. And, and so I work with uh, healers and change makers, leaders, I'm really working a lot with leaders um, and uh, creatives who are out of alignment with their self-care and, um, and with who they are you know, on some level. So to help come into right relationship with self and the earth and unleash their power, their voice, because I'm a sound healer, their potential and their creativity. So, you know, the presence is, is a key thing that is, you know, it's a key ingredient of radical self-nourishment that I teach and I share. And um, it is something that is, um, you know, in this time, uh, our presence, you know, our presence is everything and it affects everything. It affects our relationship with ourself, with, with each other. If we're not present, you know, we're not, we're missing our life. We're not here. And so, you know, it's about coming back into the present moment and then accessing, starting to access our presence. And that's a, it's a, it's a state. And so we can't just, um, you know, it, it, and it's part of our essence. It's who we are. And so it is a journey of, of uncovering who we are and, and, you know, all the things that, you know, we get so caught up in all these different identities and false beliefs uh, that aren't ourselves. And yoga has a tremendously rich philosophy in understanding the reasons for why, um, why we uh, aren't able to, to be present, you know, and so yeah, I'm excited about being on this panel and, and I'm certainly very passionate about the topic. So thanks for the opportunity to be here. Thank you for stepping forward for the convo, for sure. Amanda, would you mind introducing yourself and your work and what brings you to Cultivating Presence? Absolutely. So again, also thanks for having me and giving me this opportunity to speak to all of you. Uh, so yes, my name is Amanda Williams. I'm actually a certified natural health practitioner, a reflexologist, and a Reiki master. Um, all that to say that my practice is dealing with individuals um, with using energy and body work to really help people find their breath and reconnect with themselves. So I guess you'll see a trend in all of us in our patterns of what we do and our passion. So I'm all about finding that still point, finding that center point within yourself. Um, I use modalities from um, massage to aromatherapy to energy work to help really help people find that stillness and ultimately uh, by giving the support and the platform for people to find their presence or to allow them to be present within themselves. So that's where my passion, it's in my daily work, it's in my own practice to really just take things day by day and allow myself to um, find that joy and that contentment in the little things and all the things that I do on a daily basis as best I can and help support people in finding that safety point within themselves to get there. Beautiful. Wow. I'm just going to send a um, question here for our panelists to please enter their contact details in the chat box. So if people would like to connect and reach out with you directly that they have access to your, um, your contact info. Um, so to move into our first question. When we talk about presence, like in preparation for this panel, I did uh, a Google search around, you know, Presence, of course. And cultivating presence comes up in a lot of leadership talks, like cultivating a leadership presence, cultivating an executive presence, cultivating like a, a management presence, cultivating a healing presence. There's all these different kinds of presences. And um, it's it, I was I was surprised by um, the lack of, of discourse just around presence, just all by itself, <laughs> you know? And it it um, the word itself kind of implies a couple things: being present, presence. And I want I would like to just get started by clarifying what you guys each feel presence is. Like when we're talking about presence, um, 
can you can you discuss the relationship that you that you see between being present and presence um, and just narrow down what you feel we're talking about when we talk about presence for this talk? I can jump in. So yeah, presence is, like I said, um, it's, it's a state of being. The, the presence is your essence. It's like, um, and the way that we access our presence is through the present moment. The present moment is your access point to, to and being able to um, cultivate um, moment by moment awareness. It, it requires an attention and awareness of the present moment. And, and so, you know, in, and so presence is kind of like, it is, it's our natural state. It's who we are. It's, it's, we each, I see each of us have our own particular flavor of presence. We have like, you know, um, yeah, nobody has your presence, Melanie. No one has any of your presences. You know, you have something so distinctly you. And, and so I find that really interesting. And, and our presence is also connected to, to the infinite, to, you know, to everything. And, and so, um, and, you know, yoga has a lot to say about why, <laughs> you know, how we, we fall away from presence, you know, um, and, you know, and part of it is not understanding who we really are and getting confused between the identities and thinking, oh, you know, this is, I have all these different like identities and I actually think that's who I am. And that's how I suffer so much because I'm so attached to this particular identity and I think it's who I am. And then, you know, and all the story fields and all the things that happen. So present moment is, is the key. It gets you into presence. You know, presence just can, happens. Like it's who you are, you know, like a baby. You see a baby, babies are completely like, they're just in their presence, aren't they? Little babies, when they're first born, they're just so pure in their presence. And then we get all freaking socialized. And we get all this stuff laid on us, you know, and that's like coverings over. We're covered, 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 covered. And so, you know, the part of the process is like, you know, is uncovering. I'm not this, I'm not this, I'm not that. But uncovering uh, happens in the present moment and we can access it, you know, we can experience presence, but then we, some, we need to cultivate it. And that's why we, you know, yoga and Buddhism and all these, you know, different experiential embodiment practices. We need to get in the body present. Presence happens now through the body um, and uh, through like our attention and awareness. And, you know, and the presence is like the destination. And it's like, you know, it's like where we're going and it is who we are. And being in the present moment is the, is the way, it's the access point to our presence. Beautiful, okay. Um, Amanda, Jennifer, do, Amanda, yeah. let's, let's oh. yeah. What, what, what is your take on, on the difference between presence and being present and what we're really talking about today? So I agree with everything Deborah was saying. I think also in addition to that, I think for me, I see being present as almost an internal process. It's a conscious, it can be a conscious choice and a conscious decision to being present about being aware and mindfulness of your surroundings, of your thoughts, of your emotions, of what you're holding within your body, how you're being triggered or reacting to something and how that maybe dictates how you communicate with someone or move forward. For me, I feel that presence is almost an, an extension. It's almost a passive or a byproduct of your being presence. They're interconnected and they feed into one another, but your presence is just who you are and just your standing in your authentic self or even in your non-authentic self. It's just what you vibrate or radiate off and how you fill the space around you and how you interact with the space around you versus that internal process of being present as a conscious mindfulness. Hmm. 
Neat. So this this radiation, this like emanation coming from being in the present moment. Yeah, it's fees. There's a micro and a macrocosm around it. Mm. And it's like the internal and the external, but they all interplay and are all interconnected with one another. Um, but your presence isn't something that you actively have to work on. It's just who you are as a person yeah. and as an individual mm -hmm. versus being present is something that is an act of can be or initially is an active practice. Hopefully with practice, <laughs> it becomes just innate and in that you walk through life in this beautiful Zen kind of everything aligned, everything in balance. You're in the center of the storm and life is, and everything that you interact is the chaos and the vibration and the chaoticness that's around you. But if you can find that center point or the center of the storm, which is the quietest, most centered, peaceful place, then you can be present and see and navigate life with ease and with peace, no matter what's happening outside of you and find that joy. Thank you. Yeah. Jennifer, do you have um, another take on this? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a similar take. <laughs> I agree very much with what Deborah and Amanda shared. And I, I do agree that presence is, is a state of, of being. It's, uh, it's simply something that, that we are. And while I do believe that there is an innateness um, in presence, again, and what Deborah shared is that because of these like outside influences that really draw on our attention, it's taken us out of that innate state of being. Uh, and so I feel that the practice is to, to come back to that and uh, by being present in the moment and it's the, the practices are what help us to be present, which then cultivates this sense of presence. And there's uh, one of the limbs of yoga, Pratyahara is, is drawing in the senses, almost like a turtle uh, comes into its shell and, and it, it comes back into itself to be present and to almost detach those um, limbs from all of the outside influences that can take us out of ourselves, that tell us we need to look a certain way, be a certain way, have a particular kind of job in order to be accepted and loved and to, to come back to our true nature, our true self, which is that we simply are love and are worthy of love just for being. So it's in that, that presence that I feel we come back to that space of trust and knowing that we're worthy and it, it creates so much more ease in life. Yeah, I'll say that much for now. Okay. You know, as you guys were all talking, I'm just reminded of um, just how intense the environment is around us, socially, culturally, how many things are shifting and changing, roles are changing, um, you know, our families, habits, um, a lot of things are being highlighted as well that don't, that don't serve us anymore. Um, so I, I would love to hear a little bit more about, you know, it sounds um, all well and good to be present, to cultivate presence, but can you, can you bring it down to kind of brass tacks? Like what are some of the advantages when we actually do the practices that we're gonna be talking about later? What kinds of things can we expect to see? What are some, what are some advantages to, to cultivating presence, to doing this work? I'd love to, to jump in and, and share. Um, if we look at the some of the, the most prevalent causes of illness and disease, it's stress <laughs> is truly um, at, at the, the root cause of so many of our issues. And what is stress? Uh, stress can be anxiety and worry about the future. It can be regret about the past. And so when we come into presence, 
when we are focusing on on this moment, ah, then that worry and anxiety, that regret um, about the past, it it falls away. It can't exist when we're present. And so, from a health standpoint, our bodies hold less tension. Our bodies hold less stress. There is less of a stress response. And so we're able to be in, in a more parasympathetic nervous system response. So less fight or flight. Um, and then that, that permeates into how we show up in our relationships. We're less on edge. We're able to communicate uh, in a calmer, more loving, more compassionate way. It means that we're more clear headed. So at work or whatever it is that, that we're offering into the world, we can come at it from a place of, of more calm, more grounding. And so when we're living in the present moment, when we're able to be in presence, it it activates and it it hits on so many aspects of our life that ultimately allows us to to live more peacefully to be more happy and to also be more aware of of our surroundings and of what's around us namely the planet and how we're treating the earth how we're treating our community how we're showing up um and and it has ripple effects in, in all directions. So I believe that coming into presence is really the, the, the pinnacle. It's the, it's the middle point from where we can ripple out what we want to see in the world, how we want to live in the world and, and to create from that space, the, the world that we want to live in. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Deborah or Amanda, did you want to add anything? I can't. Yeah, that was so beautiful. Mm. Beautiful, Jennifer, what you just said. Yeah. Um, I don't know what I want to add actually at the moment. Amanda, you jump in. Okay, I will. <laughs> uh, Jennifer, beautifully said, and. Um, all in line with exactly my sentiment as well. I think, you know, the benefit of being present, it's where not just is it a place of being at ease and finding your still point, but it is also the source of infinite healing for within yourself, for your traumas, for the things that hold you back from being at ease. So dis-ease or disease, right, is not being something not being in alignment and not something being um, within ease within your body from an energetic perspective at a high vibration. And I also believe that, you know, when you are be the other benefit of being present is that is also the place of your highest vibrational point where nothing can shift or affect you, where nothing disease wise ailments wise can grow or manifest where your emotions are all in line for your highest and best good. It is the ultimate place of peace and how you can live life in that direction. That, that's, that's the benefit of being present and living a life of being present. We have this um, societal pressure and these past societal beliefs that you always have to have a goal, you always have to achieve something, you always have to move towards something or work towards something, you always have to be looking forward or looking behind to be able to heal something versus being present is just living in this moment. As we said earlier, as, as Deborah said earlier, and I believe even Jennifer said earlier as well. So it's almost your power, it's your being in presence is your powerhouse. It's where we are the strongest, healthiest, most vibrant being that we can be here on this planet in a moment to moment. So if, if I can just move into um, a, little, a little bit more of the, um, the symptoms of, of not being in one's presence. How do we 
um, it sounds beautiful, like this place that you're describing, but how do we know if we're not, if we're not in our presence? What are some of the symptoms that show up in your guys's practice that kind of highlight, hold on, like you're, you need to come back? It can jump in. I mean, uh, you know, I think, um, yeah, not being able to be, uh, I think when we're, we're in um, trauma, and when we're in, when we're being reactive and, um, you know, when we're not being able to be, to, uh, when we're just reacting to life, I think that's how we know when we're depressed. I mean, Jen was mentioning it, you know, like some of those symptoms earlier, you know, when we're feeling uh, just when we're, we're caught in these old stories and, and false beliefs, and, and um, they really take us out, um, you know, that, you know, the old stories, and we may not even know they're running, but it's like these stories running us, and it, it, they take us out, you know, whether it's I'm not lovable, uh, I'm not worthy, um, I'm not wanted, um, and, you know, those are sort of the, I think, the, the core ones, and um, those core beliefs will show up in a lot of different kinds of story fields that we have, stories that get overlaid on the present moment. So we may be, I'm in the present moment, but we've got this whole story overlay on what we're, what's happening. And so then it's affecting our relationships. It's like, all of a sudden you're talking to your partner and it's like, it's, you're talking to your parent, you know, you're like, really it's like, and so it's, that being able to come back and into presence to even know that we're in a story field or we're even in that reactivity. So the presence is the, your, the presence is, it's the place where we have, like Amanda said, we have power. This is the place where we have choice, where we can say, I choose, I choose to, um, to work with this, this old belief because I know it's not really true, but I'm living like it's true. And so, you know, the process of, of coming back into the body is so critical. So I, that's how you know, it's when you're taken out, when you can't be here, when you're traumatized, when you're numb, when, you, when you're um, eating, overeating, when you're drinking too much, when you're, you know, when addictions, like all those things that take us out we're, we live in a culture of, you know, we've got addiction on, on this, you know, on a continuum. I think we're all addicts we, because of the society we've grown up in. And, um, you know, and that, you know, the very notion of that, it takes us out of the present moment because we don't want to feel so numbness when we're feeling numb. So this idea of being able to um, interrupt, it's like we have to interrupt with our presence, with the present moment, with cultivations of practices like we've been talking about. We need to practice, it's a cultivation. Um, and that's what, you know, what the yogis have been doing, the, med, you know, the Buddhists, uh, you know, many different traditions have this practice of coming back into the moment. And that is where our power is and it's where we can create a different choice because your life is now. Do you choose to continue living the story or do you choose a different path, a path to unlock who you really are? Because you are, you, you are right now. Your presence is here right now. It's about, it, it's just about removing, removing that which is not you. We've taken on that so much, so many identities that are from our ancestors, from our families, from our friends, from our society that are not us. And so we get so confused. That's why I love the yoga philosophy because it really addresses the confusion and gives us practices. The first word in the yoga sutras is atta. It means now and now. <laughs> it's like now this moment. Mm -hmm. And I love that. It's like it's presence. That's the, that is the, where we're going. That's what that's the solution. It's, it is the, it, it's the thing that will, um, yeah, 
it's 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 what is needed to move forward and to shine and to share our gifts with the world you know mm -hmm. anyway I'll, I'll stop there i'm going on and on <laughs> thank you deborah yeah thanks i'd i'd love to i'd love to add something um yeah, some wow it, it brings up it yeah it uh it brings up so much to to hear the the two of you speak and exactly what what deborah said um you know symptoms does it feel like you're a victim to your life does it feel like you're being tossed around and and also i think so many symptoms of not being present end up manifesting physically um whenever we have physical symptoms issues digestive issues is so is more prevalent than we realize um and is at the root of more illness than we realize and it's it's because of not being present while we're eating even um how often do we just kind of shovel down food and, and not chew or not uh pay attention or talking while while eating or watching tv and so do you feel like a victim to your life do you feel like you're just being battered around well get into presence and just like amanda said that's where your power is and you'll start to feel like okay i i do have i do have a say um, in my life i am happening to my life and my life is happening for me to learn and also what's going on physically how do you feel in your body uh, because we've really been, we, we're up in here to make a blanket statement for the most part, we're very in our heads and it's taken us out of our body. And while this, this beautiful notion of, I am not my body, I am not defined by my body and I am, I am housed in my body. My essence is being housed in this beautiful vehicle. And so when we come back to presence with this vehicle and are mindful and present with our physical vehicle, then, then our life starts to unfold. Um, we just start to, to find more health <laughs> and we can hear the messages coming through and we start to recognize and realize, oh, wait a second, you know what? This, this actually isn't a healthy choice. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a different choice and something that Deborah said was pattern interrupt. Uh, so it's it's interrupting those patterns that we've gotten into the groove of. Um, so if it feels like a runaway train, you got to come back into presence. And if there's a lot of stuff going on with your physical body, come into presence and ask yourself, what's what's going on here? What am I not paying attention to? What is my body trying to tell me uh, with these symptoms? Thank you. You know, and, and just the, yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> no, I was just going to add to both Deborah and Jennifer. I feel like we're we're building on one another in the sense of I think it's they both spoke so beautifully. I just wanted to add that it's also um, some additional symptoms is when you either make your feel make yourself small, or when you either or the other extreme the ego, make yourself bigger, all in an effort to protect yourself, that you're hiding and shielding that sensitive, delicate heart of yourself. So, or that busy mind where you're in doubt, or when with the anxiety, you have all these overwhelming emotions and you don't know where to put them. And so they overwhelm you. That's all not being present. It's all not sitting within yourself and traveling and observing the source of these issues, the source of what puts you outside your body, puts outside yourself, as both Deborah and Jennifer were saying. So in the physical manifestations, our emotions are so interconnected to how, what ends up manifesting in our bodies and a physical level. You know, they talk about um, unexpressed anger. I always use this one as a simple example. You know, if you have a lot of anger and you don't express it and don't express it in a healthy way and you just keep suppressing and suppressing and biting that tongue and holding it in, you know, one of the, the manifestations of that, it can be an ulcer in your stomach. Our stomachs are where we hold our emotions. 
So Jennifer mentioned like digestive issues, anything to do with the whole stomach is where our emotional center is. Um, so, uh, so anger can manifest in physical as an ulcer, you know, when you feel that you are alone and don't have support and just struggling through life and that there's no one there or you're carrying your family or carrying everybody and you don't feel that you're getting the same level of support. That's a lot of tension and pain in your shoulders and in your upper back that you feel like you're carrying the weight of the world and that there's no one there to help you. So those are all things that also are taking you outside of yourself, preventing you from being able to, to recognize, because that's part of the, like Deborah mentioned the story field. That's a story that you have that you're not supported. We're all infinitely supported. We all, by asking, by using our voice. So by not, so another symptom is when you don't speak up for yourself, speak up for your needs and your wants, and you suppress or bite your tongue because you're afraid of how that other people will respond or react to you. Again, that's another story field or another false belief that where it holds you back from finding and receiving and being present to know that you can have everything that you want and need, more so need. Sometimes we think we want something, but <laughs> it's not necessarily what we need, but more so along the lines of what you actually need. So the physical symptoms, the fear, the victim of your life, I love that, um, be, feeling like you're a victim, um, all play into the symptoms of not being present. It is so wide, it is so broad, it is so all-encompassing. That's how important being presence is, and to come back to it. Yeah, and especially with everything that's going on, this is just such an important, um, important conversation. So, so it's clearly relevant. It's clearly like critical and key to moving forward and manifesting a different, a different, a different world for ourselves, a different future for our families, for our communities. Cultivating presence seems to be at this, at this center point, this root, as it was mentioned before, to, to create this new reality. And um, we are in a, in a really beautiful time of transition and change right now. It's a very moldable, uh, transformative time. Um, we have, you know, about 15 minutes left, a little bit less. And I'd love to focus um, now that we, we, we really understand the, um, the importance of this, of this practice. Um, can you guys please share a few take homes that folks can, um, can use to really to really come back into presence uh, in their lives. And also, um, I just want to point out folks that if you're if you'd like to continue the dialogue, um, Deborah, Amanda and Jennifer are all part of the, the Inner Arts Hive. It's a it's our online community that we've that we've created to continue these conversations in this discourse. So um, I'll I'll share the details here in our chat. Um, so that you can uh, take a look at it. Um, but in the meantime, I'd love to, to hear from you guys, as I'm sure all of our, our audience would as well, what your, your big take homes are for practices to bring us into presence to really cultivate this, this presence within. I, I can share. Um, there, there's many things. Um, but I, I would like to, because I feel passionate about our connection with nature. And I think uh, one of the fastest ways of connecting in the present moment is to spend time in nature, whether it's the park, you know, in your backyard, where you actually, you know, connect. Like you're not walking and spacing out. You go for a walk to walk and just be, and to use your body and feel, you know, use the body as a way to listen and to sense, to sense the tree, you know, the, the, you know put your hands on, on the tree bark and feel the tree and actually breathe with the tree. You know, we're in a reciprocal relationship with, with, uh, with trees and plants. And so, 
you know, like connecting with the reality and the truth of that by actually physically touching trees, put your back to a tree, your spine to a tree, hug the tree, touch the tree, sit at the tree, you know, talk to the tree, um, cry to the tree. You know, there's like a way to just like, it brings you into this moment. And so it's a really, because what happens is, or we just can sit by a river and watch the water go by and watch the ducks go by. And what happens is that we start to, you know, we are nature and we, you know, our, it's our, our natural state. Presence is our natural state. And when we start to connect and stay connect, when we start to connect with nature, we begin an entrainment process. We start to entrain with nature. Sometimes it takes a little while. You know, we can go and sit at the same spot and watch the birds. You know, that's a beautiful practice, a sit spot and sit and watch the birds and watch what's happening around you, watching the squirrels and, and just being, it's like you're in the picture. You're in, you're not separate from, you know, this tree over here. You are in relationship. So I feel like that's a really important, uh, that's a really important practice of connecting uh, with nature as a way to entrain with presence. The other thing I will say is that, you know, using your voice, sound, chanting, um, any kind of embodiment practice, dance, movement, something that brings you into your body in the present moment that you enjoy can be a beautiful access point to your presence. And, uh, you know, I've got a million practices. My friend told me the other day, you are the queen of practices and you really practice. And I laughed my head off. <laughs> so I've got a practice for everybody, <laughs> you know, dependent on their context. That's my, that's one of my gifts. So I just wanted to, I really wanted to bring in nature as a really important thing because that is why we're so disconnected. It's part of the problem. So if we come back into right relationship with nature, we start healing the planet. We start that process. And we need, this is what, this is what's required of us. I'm writing a book about living reciprocity and presence is one of the principles. We need presence in order to live reciprocity. And so I, I, I share that with you because I think it's really, we can all start Go touch a tree, go sing to a tree, singing, tree toning, tone to a tree. I swear the tree will thank you, will love you. Mm. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ceremony. That's the other yeah. thing, ceremony. And that's yeah. one of my gifts is, is holding space ceremonially and creating ceremonies for right relationship and reciprocity. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I've really enjoyed the soundings that you do on the Inner Arts Hive every every week. They they really help me come into the present, the, the mantra and the sounding practices that you share. Thank you for those. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Jennifer, would you like to share some some of your top your top practices? Sure, yeah. So two two big ones. First and foremost, I, I think of the breath, it's coming back to our breath. Um, you may notice, um, if, if you notice, when, when there's a stressful situation or when we're um, a bit distracted, our breath can get a bit shallow. And so the practice of coming back to the breath is a practice of coming back to our awareness of our breath and that will immediately get us back into our body and back into the present moment and it's it's the breath of life you know we can we can go a, a relatively long time without most things except the breath <laughs> that that is is a requirement for life and so to come back to consciously taking a deep breath into the belly so maybe we can all do that now make sure that your shoulders are are dropped away from your ears and allow your belly to expand as you take a deep inhale and then exhale out the mouth mm. 
Um, and you take a couple of those and all of a sudden, oh, wow. Okay, I feel a little clearer. I feel a little more grounded. Interesting, it, it, it creates such a, such a different um, experience physically and mentally. So coming back to the breath, and I believe that how we do one thing is how we do everything. It's where this phrase, uh, how you are on the mat is how you are off the mat. And it's on the mat in these postures, these yoga asanas where we cultivate commitment and perseverance and courage to, to go up on our, on a, in a handstand. Or, and when we cultivate that, in one moment, it permeates into every aspect of our life. And so if we can start to consciously, and one of the practices that I love to offer is set a timer on your phone, um, twice a day even start off, set a timer for two minutes. And every time, uh, you know, twice a day when that timer goes off or that alarm goes off, sit for two minutes, set a timer for two minutes and just sit there noticing your breath and your mind will wander and that's okay. That's why it's called a practice because you practice being mindful of your breath. And, and at one point you look back and start to realize, oh, wow, I'm actually noticing my breath a lot more throughout my day than I used to. And it's, it's step by step. It's not something that just overnight completely shifts especially if we've been doing something a certain way for most of our life. So coming back to the breath. And then the other aspect of that is asking ourselves questions. If we, when we find ourselves in a place of anxiety or regret, fretting over, over the something that happened in the past or being, or worrying about something that's going to happen in the future, taking a moment and saying, oh, wait a second, hold on. What am I, what am I actually afraid of? Uh, if something happened that we feel like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this happened to me. Asking, well, what's the lesson here? So inquiring in whenever there's discomfort, looking at that discomfort and, and cultivating that courage and saying, what is this discomfort trying to teach me. And again, you may not get the answer right away. It may come days later. But if we just ask the question, then we will start to breathe and live our way into the answer. So coming to our breath, super simple, take two minutes and just focus on your breath. And when you catch yourself in a thought loop, ask yourself, what is the lesson here? What is this trying to teach me? What is this come here for me to learn? And going from there. Thank you. Can I just you. jump in just a quick thing just to add to that is just, I find writing and automatic, like writing without a critic has been a very important practice for me. And like the questions that you're talking about, Jen, to like journal the questions without a critic. Uh, can be incredibly revealing and really does. It's a really powerful presence practice writing. Anyway, just wanted to add that in. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Beautiful. It's true. Yeah, journaling, journaling does help a lot. I did the artist's way and, it, you know, just being able to go through your morning pages and just really let it go, it allows you to really come into the present moment because you've released the chatter. Yeah, thank you. Um, Amanda, would you mind sharing some of your the, the, the practices that I know, I know in your work, when people are looking at being present, they come for a session because you do like <laughs> energy work. And like, that's it. That's the, um, you know, I, I live with a back injury and like massage reflexology, if there's like a pain or a discomfort that is distracting me. I it's manual intervention is is the thing that that definitely helps me a lot. Um, but would you mind sharing some some tips that that you have around uh, practices for cultivating presence? Absolutely. I mean, I don't really have much more to say from what Deborah and Jennifer both inputted because those are both, and even in my own personal practice, the movement, 
I do movement to help me shift energy. I do the mindfulness and ask the questions sometimes when I'm finding myself in that time loop. Um, the breath, the breathing exercises is something that I do and also encourage my clients to do as well, even when we're in the middle of a session and something is starting to bring them out because it's something that is a little bit triggering that just to breathe, to know that you're safe and held and to breathe. Yeah. Journaling is another practice that I do as well. So I, don't, I mean, not to repeat, like, that's all the same beautiful work. Um, and ultimately we all need help at times sometimes too, to find that quiet point and to quiet the mind. You know, we all are sometimes so much up here and so much in our heads. And so know that there is people out there, not just myself, but Deborah, Jennifer, and other beautiful practitioners, yourself included, Melanie, that support people and helping them to find that quiet point. And that's just that, even just that moment in time. And it, it, is, it is a reprogramming, it is a relearning, it is changing the way that we think and the way that we operate in life. So it is a um, changing those neural pathways. Um, and it's through practice and it's through those baby steps and doing it a little bit at a time and doing it often. And it gets easier, I promise you. It gets easier with practice over time. It may seem daunting in the beginning, but it doesn't have to be the big leaps and bounds. It just can be little, just little things as Jennifer and Deborah both said, baby steps to start off. Um, to yeah. Get yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Do, um, just, would you guys, we, we have to wrap it up for today, but do you have like a closing statement to really send people off on like an inspired note to do this work? Like, you know, doing, doing this work to cultivate presence is going to have such a huge impact on our lives and it is hard work. Um, but, but can, do you have a little, like a, a, a send off message for folks before we say farewell? I, oh. Yeah, Amanda, go ahead. <laughs> we all want to jump in with our, <laughs> our ballots, our power ballots, I want to call it. Um, you know, I think ultimately it's just remembering that we have, we are so much stronger than we realize. We have so much strength within us and we all have a purpose here and we all are not here by accident. And our truth and our power and our strength is innate. Own it and know that you can live that way and be held that way and know that that interconnectedness to ourselves, to the world, to the universe, we all got one another. You're never alone. I can jump in. Yeah, you're, you're your presence is a gift to the world. You are a gift. Your very presence, you know, you are, you know, you're worthy because you are. And you are here. I'm just, you know, similar to Amanda that, you know, you came here. You have these particular flavor of presence it's so juicy and yummy and people want to drink from it and you you know it's like you came here for a purpose and so you need to come and come back into your presence come back into that right relationship because we got a freaking job to do here we have to stop sleep walking and we we need to uh we've got a planet to heal we've got a world to build a new world to build and um we need all of us to shine our gifts into the world, shine our presence into the world. Our presence is a, is a gift to everyone. When we can come into our true selves, we are a gift. You are a gift. And I thank you. You know, it, you're, it's beautiful to behold, you know, and the more that we can develop our, cultivate our presence, the more we're able to, to really co-create a new world together and you know love each other in a wholeness so blessings to you all aho aho thank you thank you thank you 
Uh, what I would love to say to everyone here and everyone who, who watches this is that you are not alone. We are all moving through this life and the, the lessons and the challenges that, that come up and you are not alone and you deserve to experience and feel your worthiness. You deserve to experience and feel just how loved and lovable and just as Deborah said, the world, your beauty and your radiance and your gift of offering that and of being seen in that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Kayla, you, you had asked for a moment to just share some words with folks. Um, and I'd like to take this opportunity also to invite our our, our other guests today to, to share words of support, wisdom, uh, to send each other off um, in this, this moment of presence. Yeah, I just wanted to quickly share. So today was really healing and the whole time I could feel my throat chakra vibrating. So I just wanted to say something that I've been working on. So I'm bipolar type one and um, I've been on a whole journey with it. And through that, I totally lost my presence, like both like being present and my presence myself. So I just wanted to share, like if anyone needs a takeaway, um, just what Deborah had said too, like how it's such a gift. Like if you can choose it, I definitely encourage you to, because it's something that we can take for granted, but um, it's something I've learned, like I will never take for granted again. So I just wanted to share that if anyone needed another little nudge. Thank you. Thank you, Kayla. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. Well, without further ado, I bid you all farewell and give you all huge gratitude um, for joining us today. It's through these conversations that we really do shape the present moment and those uh, the impact of that work right here right now is going to ripple out um, into our families, our communities, um, future generations. I'd like to, to say thank you, uh, Deborah, Amanda and Jennifer for your time, your energy, um, for really for really showing up for for this conversation to, to give folks the the tools to, to step forward. And um, I encourage everybody to, you know, if you, if you need a little bit of a reset, you know, a little bit of support, a little bit of extra, you know, um, a pro to support you in this, please do reach out to, to them. Deborah, Amanda, and Jennifer are amazing practitioners and uh, they're here to help. Um, sometimes that one-on-one -on -one support is just really powerful. It gets you Kind of ahead of the curve, you know, <laughs> it can take a long time to work on things, um, doing the individual practices. Um, sometimes it's really nice to get get some professional support. So um, I, I just want to thank you all again and again and again for, for being here today and uh, wish you all the best moving forward. Thank Melanie, you so much. can I offer a sound for everybody? As of course. Leaders? Thank I you. just thought just to like, you know, bring in some sound and maybe if you want to sound with me, that would be really good because that really using your own voice is really yeah. powerful. So let's so do, guys, you can you can take your mute off if you would like if you to want to sound uh, with me or if you don't want to have together or if you don't want to have uh, it unmuted, that's fine. I'm going to invite you to say a ta <laughs> because a ta is here now. And we'll just chant ta together. A -ta. I really like ta. I want you to feel it in your body. Your stomach gets pulled in. A -ta. A -ta. Two more times. A -ta. A -ta. Ah, uh, ta.
Ha. Ha. It means here and now. It's like and now. It's the beginning of the yoga sutras, a, a, a yogic text, you know, thousands of years old. And it's the, it, it really is the, the energy of presence. <laughs> mm, beautiful. So I'll leave that with you all. Okay, have a wonderful day, everybody. Thank you so much. It was Many wonderful. blessings.